While the second episode is about the team, Trini has the most growth. We learn she's afraid of heights, and overcoming her fear is her arc. <laughs> We learn that Rita trapped Zordon in his time warp, and she looks to trap the rangers in a prison dimension, sending down Bones. This zombie guy. <laughs> Bones always scared me as a kid, and he's creepy even today. I'm pretty sure Bones is voiced by Brian Cranston, who voiced a lot of the monsters. There's some weird modulation on his voice, creating a very memorable performance. Also, he can take off his head. To recite Shakespearean quotations. I'm amazed Fox allowed them to show this, honestly. It's sheer nightmare fuel, but I love it. Fun fact about Brian Cranston. Billy's surname is Cranston because of him. A lot of people behind the scenes on Power Rangers, their names were used for characters during the early years. Brian Cranston also appeared as Zordon in the 2017 Power Rangers reboot film. How's that for franchise loyalty? Editor's note. Turns out Brian Cranston didn't actually voice Burns on the show. Rather the late great Tom Winner, 1947 to 2024, Winner lent his voice to many a Power Rangers monster. Rest in peace Tom Winner. Anyway, Bones controls the time warp with his head. Again, nightmare fuel. Let's do the, time warp again. the Rangers fight foot soldiers in this new dimension that aren't putties, weirdly enough. They look like skeletons from the children's book Funny Bones. The Rangers use their handguns, or blade blasters, so named because their guns become swords. How useful. <laughs> If Bones' head is destroyed, the rangers can beat him and escape. Trini successfully tosses Bones' head into the abyss, but Rita's not through yet, sending a giant knight to bust open the dimension and beat the rangers. Jason subdues him using his T-Rex. Usually it's the Megazord that defeats the monsters, which is awesome, but it's great to see Jason grow into his leadership role in moments like this. For his finishing move, the T-Rex roars into the earth, creating a tornado that turns the knight into dust. The other individuals Zords have their own attacks too. The Mastodon's freezing mist, the Triceratops has cannons, also chains to wrap around enemies, and the Sabretooth Tiger and Pterodactyl use lasers. This doesn't always come up, but it's cool when it does. It's cool seeing shots of the Rangers in their individual cockpits too. The Rangers communicators, whose faces look like microphones, are iconic. They ring like phones, using the Power Rangers theme in beeps and boops actually. Classic. While the communicators were built as just that, they tapped into the command center's teleportation unit. How useful. Now is a good time to bring up the slang in the show. This is so 90s. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, nice stereo. There's a uh, grungy button over in the corner. What a fruitcake. Would be considered a homophobic slur by today's standards. But don't worry, don't worry. Zach just meant the monster they were fighting was particularly crazy that day. That was all. He seemed really bummed. Let's book. We need time to reboot. <sighs> Zach, at one point, had a slamming CD of contemporary music. Read that ultra 90s. Fat tune. Also physical media. Retro. I love this. You know me. I'm a physical media guy. This is so neat. That's bogus. That's very Bill and Ted. It looks totally far out and funky down the drain, dude. The hell? Even Alpha is hip to the language of the day. Welcome, homeboys, homegirls. What brings you to the hood? Dude. Dude. Very 90s. In fact, it predates that. Is Alpha a hippie? <laughs> Alpha runs around like in a silent comedy, complete with vaudeville-style piano soundtrack. Lots of sped-up silent comedy gags in this show. I love it. We're introduced to a major catchphrase of this franchise. More phenomenal! We'll hear this a lot in Power Rangers, and I love it, so... More phenomenal. This is more phenomenal. More phenomenal idea, Billy. More phenomenal. More phenomenal, Zach. 